Mother Teresa Facts The Guardian Saint of Gutters 1. Mother Teresa left her parents' house when she was just 18 years old. Mother Teresa went to Ireland when she was 18 years old to join the Sisters of Loreto. Before she traveled to India, she stayed there for six weeks at the Institute of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Before discovering her actual calling, she spent 17 years as a teacher in the Sisters of Loreto branch in India. Mother Teresa never again saw her mother or sisters after joining the Sisters of Loreto, despite the fact that she rose to fame and gained international recognition. 2. She spoke five languages well. Mother Teresa's proficiency in Hindi, Bengali, Albanian, English and even Serbian is a delightful fact. While learning one language is hard enough, a great benefit of her speaking multiple languages was being able to communicate with people from all across the globe. 3. Actually, Saint Teresa was born when Macedonia was under Ottoman rule. Skopje, Macedonia, is where Mother Teresa was born. But back then, it was known as the Ottoman Empire rather than Macedonia. Macedonia was attacked by the Ottomans in 1371, and they remained there until 1912. 4. She received a state funeral from the Indian government. Mother Teresa was a well-known figure for the Indian government who helped many of their residents save their lives and further their education. As a result, they saw to it that she received a state funeral when she passed away. Politicians and presidents of state are typically the only people who receive the honor of a state funeral. One of the finest tributes the Indian government could pay to Mother Teresa was to hold a state funeral for her. 5. She received numerous honors from the Indian government for her efforts. Mother Teresa received gratitude and recognition from the people and government of India. In 1962, Padma Shri received the inaugural award. The Jawaharlal Nehru Award for International Understanding was given in its place in 1969. Finally, she was awarded the Bharat Ratna, the highest civilian honor India can bestow, in 1980. 6. On a train, Mother Teresa received a summons from Christ. She repeated the incident in which Christ's voice could be heard when she was on a train. It was described by her as a second calling or a call inside a call. In September of 1946, it took place. Mother Teresa was on that train from her annual retreat when she heard Christ's voice telling her to go to Calcutta and serve the poorest of the poor. 7. She created a facility for the local lepers and terminally ill people. Nirmal Rite was founded by Mother Teresa and the Missionaries of Charity. The Place for the Pure of Heart was another name for Nirmal Rite. It served as a haven for individuals who desired a dignified, peaceful death. She not only constructed Nirmal Rite but also a tiny leper community. Shanti Nagar, often known as the Town of Peace, was the name given to the settlement. India's Shanti Nagar is close to Asansol. Lepers could live and work in peace in Shanti Nagar. Even the land was given to Mother Teresa by the Indian government. 8. In her honor, Mama Top Energy created a train express. In honor of Mother Teresa's 100th birthday, the railway minister, Mama Top Energy, built an exhibit train dubbed Mother Express. Three air-conditioned coaches on the train displayed quotes and events from Mother Teresa's life. It toured the nation for half a year in 2010. 9. Some detractors think Mother Teresa was awful. If you've witnessed the things Mother Teresa accomplished for the poor, it's difficult to accept the terms Mother Teresa, bad, and critics. However, there are beliefs that contend she was really a harsh person. Christopher Hitchens was a well-known opponent of hers. He argued that Mother Teresa erred by taking funding from dubious sources. Hitchens thought Mother Teresa was a sadist who reveled in the pain of others and a religious propagandist. Because of what he claimed to have seen in Nirmal Rite, Christopher Hitchens made this statement. Hitchens claimed that medical help was inaccessible and that hospitals were a terrible place to die. 10. Mother Teresa was the first person to wear the traditional sari after she left the Sisters of Loreto. Although it wasn't her plan, Mother Teresa's distinctive white sari with blue stripes ended up being a standard outfit for the missionaries of charity. Mother Teresa discovered her sari at Harrison Road while traveling to Calcutta from the Sisters of Loreto. The missionaries of charity's pro bono attorney, Bishwajit Sarkar, secured the sari's intellectual property rights. 11. Mother Teresa's net worth is the subject of rumors. It is unknown what Mother Teresa was worth at the time of her death. Although her group received a lot of assistance, its facilities were anything but average. When it was discovered that there was no quarantine area for tuberculosis patients, nor were there any painkillers available, many people condemned her leadership. 
The New York Times said that Mother Teresa's charity was among the richest in the world and that the majority of her funds were genuinely secured. However, it is another thing if the Vatican got the money she left behind or not. 12. Mother Teresa was vehemently opposed to both divorce and abortion. Mother Teresa was vehemently opposed to both abortion and divorce during her lifetime. Because of the killing of a child and a mother's conscience, she previously argued that abortion posed one of the greatest risks to world peace. She wrote a public letter to Ireland regarding divorce during their discussion of the nation's divorce laws. The fate of the affected children and the commitment the married couple made in front of God and the church were her main concerns. 13. She struggled with her personal spirituality. After she passed away, it was made public that Mother Teresa had battled with her faith. Her lack of faith began almost immediately after she heeded the call to assist the people of Calcutta, she claimed in letters to a close ally. She also frequently claimed that her upbeat demeanor and smile were a mask she donned in front of others, portraying herself as alone and tortured by the absence of God. Because of this, she occasionally even questioned whether God himself existed. 14. Mother Teresa's teachings were greatly impacted by Dranophile. Mother Teresa's mother has a charitable heart. Dranophile frequently fed the needy and opened her home to them. She frequently advised her daughter to share her food with others and refrain from eating alone. The deeds of Dranophile Bojax Huey sparked Mother Teresa's passion for altruism. 15. Diana of Wales was a person she met. Another kind individual, Princess Diana, was a close friend of Saint Teresa of Calcutta. They had many interests, so their connection wasn't all that unusual, to begin with. Both of them were prominent individuals who made humanitarian contributions that affected many people's lives. When they met, they would talk in private and spend 30 to 40 minutes praying together. Princess Diana was praised by Mother Teresa for being a model mother, wife, and sympathetic to the disadvantaged. Even when Princess Diana passed away, the rosary was in her hands. 16. Her life has been the subject of movies and novels. Authors and filmmakers were motivated to write books and create films on her transformation into the living saint. Sadly, Hitchens also produced a television documentary called Hal's Angel on her. Even though Hitchens' documentary is well known, there are many other films that focus on Mother Teresa's life. They emphasize her ties to God and her charitable work for the underprivileged. The life of Mother Teresa was the subject of numerous biographies. Her words of wisdom have been gathered by others and published in books. 17. Ronald Reagan, a former president, also presented her with a prize. Mother Teresa received the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 1985 from President Ronald Reagan and his wife. Mother Teresa was an exception, even though the medal is certainly awarded to Americans who have proudly served their country. President Reagan thought it only just to award Mother Teresa a medal despite her Yugoslavian heritage because of her lifelong work to protect human life. He also admitted that Mother Teresa might melt the gold and utilize the proceeds as funds. 18. Nobody's religious conversion was coerced by her. Despite being a devoted adherent, Mother Teresa never forced someone to become a Catholic. However, rumors of malpractice and forced conversion have resurfaced years after her passing. Mother Teresa stated that she had not done any of that as of yet. Her biographer Naveen Chawaiu once questioned if she had ever converted anyone. She answered, Yes, I am a convert. I convert you to be a better Muslim, better Sikh, better Christian, better Hindu, and so on. Once you have found God, you can treat him any way you please. 19. She requested a pilgrim hostel, and the Indian government granted her a wish. Mother Teresa requested a place in Calcutta from the Indian government when she left her monastery so she could start the Missionaries of Charity. In 1948, they provided her with a modest hostel close to the sacred temple of Kali. Then, in subsequent letters, it was discovered that she had received guidance and encouragement as she bravely opened up her own order at a young age. 20. In her chest was a pacemaker. Mother Teresa was fitted with a pacemaker in her chest to regulate the contractions and muscles of her heart as a result of her heart issues. When the surgery was performed, she was 79 years old. Her private physician, Dr. Rajan Watts, said that the pacemaker was operating flawlessly. Sadly, doctors thought her illness was getting worse because of the excessive workload she put on herself. 21. Mother Teresa was frequently referred to as the living saint. Mother Teresa was also known as the living saint of the gutters while she was alive. She had dedicated her life to helping the ailing, the elderly, and the abandoned. 
She was given the moniker the living saint of the gutters because she was frequently cited as a living illustration of what saints ought to be. 22. She received Pope Paul VI's limousine. She once received one of Pope Paul VI's limousines as a gift. Mother Teresa funded the leper colony she had founded with opulence rather than luxuriating in it. Although it is generally impolite to keep people waiting, Pope Paul VI felt it admirable that Mother Teresa was so obviously committed to her life's work. When the Vatican learned of her work with the missionaries of charity, they gave her Lincoln Continental limousine as a gift. 23. By agreement of all, she took charge of the order once more. In 1990, she resigned and announced her intention to retire as Superior General of the Missionaries of Charity, but public pressure to keep her on completely drowned out her own voice. Others claimed that she was exhausted as a result of her hectic schedule. Then, as a result of heart issues, Mother Teresa was obliged to retire. Mother Teresa passed away following a heart attack in 1997. Sister Nirmala then took over as her successor. 24. Sister Maria Nirmala Joshi MC was her successor. After Mother Teresa passed away, Sister Nirmala took over as Superior General of the Missionaries of Charity. Sister Nirmala's malaria and subsequent fevers were also acknowledged. Months after Mother Teresa passed away, she was named the leader of the Missionaries of Charity. She previously remarked that she had no desire to assume Mother Teresa's position. Being oneself, in the successor's opinion, is not difficult, however, if she had attempted to emulate Mother Teresa, she would have failed miserably. 25. She received speedy beatification. This came as a result of Pope John Paul II's directive to accelerate her beatification and elevation to sainthood. She proved she was deserving of the title by performing miracles and helping the less fortunate, in addition to enjoying enormous popularity. One of the quickest paths to canonization at the time was Mother Teresa's beatification. 26. Mother Teresa was inspired to alter her name from Agnes by Saint Teresa of Lisieux. The real name of Mother Teresa is Agnes Gonjaboya Jew. Once she landed in Dublin, Ireland to join the Sisters of Loreto, she changed her name to Teresa. Mother Teresa admired Saint Teresa of Lisieux, a young woman who responded to God's call at a young age and as the patron saint of missions and florists. She also adopted Saint Teresa's manner of living. 27. Saint Teresa of Calcutta had a wonderful voice. Mother Teresa sang in the choir before entering her convent. She attended a primary school taught by nuns, and she also gave her voice to the church by singing in the chorus. She even sang solo lines because of how lovely her voice sounded. 28. Her miracles were observed by the Vatican from a distance. A person must work miracles that are unfathomable to humans in order to be beatified or canonized. Her second miracle led to her canonization, although her first miracle resulted in her rapid beatification. Her medical miracles were acknowledged by Popes John Paul II and Francis I, who then proceeded to canonize her. 29. She declined an invitation to a banquet to celebrate winning the Nobel Peace Prize. Mother Teresa, in keeping with her principles, turned down invitations to a party after receiving the Nobel Peace Prize. Even though it is one of the highest honors anyone could possibly receive, Mother Teresa advised them to donate the money to a good cause instead. 190,000 US dollars in total were transferred to her. In 1979, she was given the Nobel Peace Prize for her efforts in leading the fight against global poverty and suffering. 30. She was tasked with representing the Vatican and the United Nations in public. It is an accomplishment in and of itself to be invited to speak at the UN. Mother Teresa delivered a speech in 1985 at a UN gathering on the topic One Strong Resolution, I Shall Love. The United Nations, an international body established to defend human rights, celebrated its 40th birthday. She was also requested to testify on behalf of the Vatican. Rarely do Roman Catholics have the opportunity to represent the Vatican. This elevates the offered deal even further. They clearly value and acknowledge her effort by inviting her to speak on their behalf.